In this video, I'm going to explain how uh, alarm systems get drained. What I mean by drained, I mean by when they get overloaded and the battery does not last very long. For example, uh, there is a battery. It happens to be a 7 amp hour battery. It's not very big. For most homes, people use the 7 amp hour battery and it's sufficient. But as your alarm system grows, you add more zones, maybe some keypads, maybe even a mag lock. A mag lock is a magnetic uh, a lock that when it activates, when current flows through it, it closes, uh, keeps a door closed. So that's a mag lock. Um, maybe there's beams. Beams use more uh, current than regular PIRs. So as your alarm system grows, you find that the uh, backup time when the power goes out uh, is actually getting too short. So what people can do is you can now use a external power supply. So I'll just show you an example of a power supply. So there you'll see a extra external power supply. There's a nice big 18 amp hour battery, a 5 amp power supply. And these extra battery bank or power supplies, he has another one, a competing manufacturer. This is using a CSB battery, but a similar thing. Uh, this one just giving overload protection uh, as well. Um, these giving you the extra capacity so that your alarm lasts longer. So how do you do this? Um, I do have videos explaining how to install these and use these battery backups. But I'm going to show you some actual measurements. You see here is a meter. I'm going to... Um, it's in the form of a current meter. I'm going to actually measure the current and I'm going to show you what is draining the battery and how you solve that problem. So obviously the solution is uh, extra battery banks, but you know, how do you analyze this? Do you just uh, assume that you must just put battery banks and I'm going to show you how to take the measurements and also what these measurements mean and even do a calculation explain to how many hours you're going to have on the battery bank once you've loaded it up. Okay, so since this is my little lab set up here, I'll just explain to you what is happening here. Okay, so these are the battery banks, or, or let me just say backup power supplies, and I'll just shift that out of the way, and they are connected here. So here is one power supply, there is the output, uh, 12 to 13 volts depending on the loading so there it comes ready to be connected to whatever load you want whatever sensors so there's the one and if you're wondering what this next to it well that's the for the other um, backup the uh, power bank and that's also the 12 13 volts uh, depending on the loading and I'll just show you um, it's very important that you uh, know how to use multimeters because in order to do this you'll have to be able to read voltage and current so there there is a voltmeter it's just a basic meter giving you voltage and I'll just show you polarity is important when it comes to uh, alarm systems and you can see that it's giving me 13.6 volts so that is coming from here if I switch this off and I power it down remove the battery well then that 13.6 volts is going to go offline it's going to say zero now something like this with an 18 amp hour battery is going to be able to power a lot of devices while your normal alarm system battery that little 7 amp hour battery uh, on that side there is not going to last very long especially if you've got a large alarm system now just for uh, completeness I'll just show you the other battery bank uh, there we go 13.7 uh, volts available ready to be connected to your peripherals now peripherals means things that are connected extra to your alarm extra things now for example can you see there there's a little sim card this is going to sms you when the alarm activates that's a peripheral here in the corner is a remote receiver this has three relays while the uh, standby current is not very high but when you activate the relay you know it's uh, 40 milliamps or whatever it is uh, depending on the size and then that's obviously got a little uh, beep here so that makes a sound and all those things use uh, power so that's a current drain once again then so this is a peripheral you might have four or five of these maybe to open gates and extra sirens or whatever you have and then can you see that that is an, also a peripheral this is an expander board maybe you've you need more 
zones and that are available on your main um, board here. See here is the alarm panel board. Here is the alarm panel board as I said. But here is some extra zones. Maybe you've got three of these. Maybe they're in different parts of your factory or your installation and you've got long runs. So again, this is loading all onto your alarm. Now most alarms are not designed for the maximum current drain. What I mean by that is that uh, under normal circumstances, maybe it's set for like 16 zones. So 16 uh, passives that are indoor don't use a lot of current. Now here are all these zones. Now these zones would be connected to things like this, uh, your passive infrared sensors. These don't use a lot of uh, current. In fact, they're very, very efficient in terms of the current. And here's an Optex uh, Fit Sensor FTN. I love these. And there you can see it's only 17 milliamps. It's great. It uses very low um, current. But then we've got other devices like smoke detectors infrared beams now the beams are power hungry they want a lot of current in order to work and especially if they got over they run over long distances like 60 meters so what you'll find is maybe your your um, infrared sensors in your house or your offices I don't use a lot but you'll find there's a few that are going to be power hungry and they're going to deplete your battery as your installation grows so how do you measure this how do you know what's using what what amount of current well you have to measure it with an ammeter so here is an ammeter and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some tests and show you how to measure the current drain on your battery now just before I do I just want to explain a few things um, this it happens to be an IDS made alarm system uh, it can charge a battery of about 7 amp hour although they do say you can put a maximum battery there of 12 amp hour 12 amp hour is still not going to be enough for a really large alarm system you're going to have to use these um, additional uh, power supplies so what do you do you see what you'd normally do is just connect it up to the power rail on your alarm panel there it says auxiliary plus uh, uh, there's the 12 volt the the, the um, zero volt and eventually this thing will be totally um, full with wires it'll look something like that you know okay there I'm using plug um, terminal blocks but you'll see like lots of red wires and lots of black wires all draining which basically is going directly from the battery now you might be saying well why is there a battery there in the first place the battery there is only when the power goes down or just if it's got insufficient uh, power to send a transmission signal so if you look at the top here there is the AC adapter powering the alarm system but the purpose of the battery is when the electricity goes off now you might be saying well I live in a country where there's uh, hardly any power outage well good for you but uh, in other countries power is not a uh, reliable resource it goes off at least maybe once a month once a week uh, right now in South Africa with the load shedding that means uh, there's scheduled power outages of up to four hours a day um, th you know th that's when you're really going to test your alarm is it going to last that four hours you need to have a different setup so let's measure the drain on this battery in its current form I've already uh, moved a lot of the um, sensors off the battery now there you can see look I've got my sensors connected to these two um, terminal blocks there, there's a there's a little terminal and there's a terminal and they have already been connected to an external power supply so that would have been connected to alarm so let's see what those sensors are pulling and then also don't forget about extra devices such as keyboards I mean keypads and expander boards so all together um, I've, I've got actually two here but imagine they were all on one and I'll give you the current measurement so what you do in order to measure current you'll have to uh, break the circuit and connect an ammeter in series remember current is measured in series so here I've got the positive and the negative lead I've set my ammeter to uh, current there it's uh, amps uh, sorry there it is amps and then there is the common and then you can see I'm measuring amps DC we are using DC here with the, these alarms do not run on AC they run on a DC uh, current so in order to measure the current usage I have to disconnect uh, one of the, either the positive or the negative doesn't matter and I open I literally open the circuit you see there I've opened the circuit that was the uh, circuit for the just the 
uh, sensors now this is not a very big installation i've got installations where there are like 45 outdoor sensors pulling a 1.5 amp so don't expect to see 1.5 amps this is a small installation i'm just showing you but as i said if you had a lot of beams and 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 extra devices it would use a lot more current so so that's just the uh, remote receiver getting powered up and there you can see it says point two amps it's not a high drain but now you've got to add it up you see that's just the sensors you see here these are the sensors so that means that the positive and negative of each one of those sensors now remember i showed you the sensors the different types of sensors the positive and negative are all being fed from an independent power supply so that already relieves the battery of additional uh, um uh, loading uh, okay this is only 0.2 amps but it's, it's actually a much higher if I show you the loading that was from the keypads as well and the other devices so I'll show you now if I add them up um, you see there's 0.2 now, and just just in terms of how I've uh, set this up can you see that I'm, I'm doing this in series I've opened the circuit while I've put a screwdriver here is just to uh, uh, maintain the the circuit series circuit and there you see the 0.2 amps now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to actually show you the loading on the um other uh bank and that is sitting here and that is for some keypads literally just a few keypads and maybe this that expander board in the corner which i showed you and you're going to see that even just small items such as that still use quite a bit of current Okay, so say for example, I'm opening this one. Uh, this is just for the keypads and um, and uh, what one expander board, and you're going to see the current drain here. Uh, look at that. That is 0.4 amps, 0.39, uh, yeah, 0.4 amps just for some keypads. Now imagine you had six keypads, and imagine you had a few expander boards that would easily reach uh, 0.9 amps. Because I mean, this is just like two keypads and an expander board. That's already 0.4 amps. So that is going to drain the battery. That would have been on the battery, but right now it's on an external power supply. And I'll just show you uh, using a calculator the difference in the uh, standby time had this been on the uh, general alarm side. So keeping in mind that uh, I've actually split this, and this is just my little lab set up here. So that's point, call that point 0.4 amps. That's just for keypads. And then don't forget about the other uh, point 0.2. So that would have uh, collectively been point 0.6 amps so that's 600 milliamps just for zones and keypads that does not include this little uh, sms communicator which is quite power hungry especially when it transmits and then don't forget the siren and the uh, transmitter itself and then obviously this also needs uh, tens of milliamps just to to keep running Right, now if you want to test the loading on your alarm battery, uh, this you'd probably do before you do any um, additions or you know by adding uh, power supplies, you'd first test what the current loading is. All you're gonna do is you're gonna disconnect either the positive or negative, it really doesn't matter. And then you're gonna connect that to your current clamp there or your one lead. And then here comes the other clamp which is going on to the battery. And there you can see I'm now going to switch off the power and the reason why I'm going to switch off the power is the whole point is to measure the battery load when the uh, uh, mains is off. So I'm going to switch off the power now and let's see what the loading on the battery is. Okay, I don't know if you noticed it actually changed direction. So that 0.2 amps was actually the charging current uh, because uh, now it changed direction. So now it's getting the current from the battery. So this battery is being depleted at 0.2 amp. Um, and you can call it 0.2 amps per hour. You see there, 0.2 amps uh, every, that, that, if you work that out, it'll be a 0.2 amp hour. So it's, it's currently draining 0.2 amps, keeping in mind that if people were walking around uh, or the um, alarm was sending a, a status update to the uh, control room, that would go to 1.2 amps because remember that uh, when the transmitter activates on the alarm, that's like an amp. So there we go. That battery is not uh, heavily loaded at all because I've already removed 
0.6 amps. Remember, I've just showed you that the sensors and the keypads amounted to like 400 milliamps and 200 milliamps. So I've already released a 600 milliamps. So that would have been 0.8 amps. Now, this is a small insulation. In other insulations, I've, I've got um, setups where there's a, each battery bank is being used at one amp. And that is why I had to uh, deplete, well, actually um, spread the load. See, that's the whole point. It's the same way you wire a DB board. Maybe if you know about you're an electrician and you understand uh, uh, DB boards and circuit breakers, each phase needs to be balanced. You can't have all your power on. Uh, and look at that. The, the, the alarm actually died, by the way. Look at that. That battery needs to be charged. Look, it actually died. Um, just showing you that even a 0.2 amps is not that uh, little. Uh, 0.200 milliamps, there you go, the alarm panel may have tried to uh, do a transmission to the control room and it just died. So that battery is probably a little bit uh, faulty um, or it's, uh, it's still a bit depleted, I need to get a new battery or charge it. Okay, so let's start summing this all up. The first thing is, if you find your battery life is getting a bit low, only giving you like two or three hours, go and measure the current on the battery or use it, use that the battery. You connect your uh, meter in series and it must give you DC amps. Then you measure the current. If the current is 0.2 amps on an alarm system, that is actually not a lot. You, you, it's actually fine. But if it's over about 0.3, 0.35, well, maybe consider spreading some of the zones or all of the zones onto an external power supply such as this and as you can see the one uh, power supply is carrying 0.4 amps while the other one was actually was still very likely loaded 0.2 i'm still going to build up on this alarm system this is just the early stages so if you work this out this is an 18 amp hour battery and also in here an 18 amp hour battery and you compare that to the alarm 7 hour amp battery you're going to see that i've just extended the backup time considerably right so i'm just going to demonstrate a higher current load there you can see i've got a what's it a trans uh, Right, so this is a different setup here, and here you can see I've got a battery bank. This is part two of an alarm system. You can see that these are just expanders, and they are all, look at all these positive wires, uh, the red ones and the black ones, all feeding off that expander. Now imagine that all being fed off one alarm battery, a 7 amp hour. You'll see now when I do the current measurement how ridiculous that would be if it was on a 7 amp hour battery. Now here is a battery, ba uh, battery backup supply. This is that same one, a 18 amp hour battery, and I'll just measure the current for you to give you an idea. This is the infeed from the uh, fifth, the 18 amp hour battery. There it is, uh, powering up one uh, expander board, two expander boards, a little relay circuit, uh, and there's a, a receiver, a wireless uh, receiver. Okay, so to do a current measurement, I just need to open the circuit. There we go, and connecting it up there that is the uh, positive uh, going into the meter look at that it comes in in series coming out there and then uh, remember this is amps so we're now going back to the supply here remember it has to be in series when you're measuring current And you can see things getting powered up there. And just to show you, uh, look at that. That is 0.96 amps. 0 0.95, 0 0.96. And keeping in mind that this little uh, receiver here, there's some relays here. And I'm almost certain that if somebody uh, activates one of these relays, uh, that will hit the one amp because it will need a current to energize the relay. And I'll actually do that. Okay, so there is the... Uh, uh, amp meter you can see it's 0.95 amps and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to activate one of those uh, relays here and let's just see uh, there you see went into the one amp you anyway, know just that's just to to demonstrate how the load does fluctuate so now you can see uh, on larger alarm systems how it's uh, much higher than the 200 milliamps or the 400 milliamps but I just showed you this there you can see I'm just doing a power measurement and now let's go look at an excel spreadsheet to work out the backup time on all these peripherals okay so what I've got here is a spreadsheet 
and um, let's just recap. Do you remember there was the main board area and we measured the battery usage at 0.2 amps. That was the uh, battery on the uh, connected directly to the alarm system was only the seven amp hour battery. These are the units, amps, amp hour, hours. And um, what you can see is the usage on that little seven hour amp battery was 0.2. The battery capacity was seven amp hours. And this is how I worked out the backup time, 22.7 hours. This is my formula. The capacity of the battery divided by the load. So this is seven divided by 0.2. And then I times it by a derating factor of 0.2. And the reason why I do that is you're never going to get 100% from a battery. Maybe, if you're lucky, 65%. So what happens is the lead acid battery has got quite an interesting uh, response. What happens is, uh, say it's 12 volts. It'll stay at about 11.5, 11.2 and give you a consistent uh, current for a while. And the minute it starts going below about 10 volts, um, it actually starts decaying quite rapidly. So you can derate it by about 35%, even a brand new battery. You know, that's my experience. So obviously you can do your research and find out other derating factors. Now that is for a brand new battery. So I would get about 22.7. Uh, so let's just call it 22 and a half hours if the drain on that battery was only 200 milliamps. Now that's for a brand new battery. What's going to happen after the battery is three years old? you're going to derate it again. So I've derated it by 30%, but you could probably go closer to 50% because lead acid batteries only last about three years. In fact, if you do UPS installations, that's uninterruptible power supply, the batteries are only warranted for three years anyway. Thereafter, they say that the lifespan, the uh, backup time of the battery is considerably reduced. So you could probably say 50% reduction. Anyway, uh, these are not hard-working batteries, uh, so let's just say uh, 70, 30% uh, reduction. Okay, so there we go. Now, do you remember I had that other battery backup, and then we only measured also 200 milliamps, and then we had that other battery backup, and then that had 400 milliamps. So look at my standby time, 58 and a half hours versus 29 hours. These are amazing i mean obviously that is uh it's not going to stay like that because i'm still expanding this installation but 0.2 amps on an 18 amp hour battery uh, is going to give you close to 60 hours backup time and even after three years you're still going to get over 40 hours okay so this is how i've calculated now do you remember i just showed you that uh that last setup right now and that was 0 0.9 it was actually closer to 0 0.95 um and you can see my calculation i'm only going to get about 12 hours of backup time if it's calling if it's uh, uh, the load is 0.9 amps and after three years I'm only gonna get about eight and a half hours so this is how you should do it you, you do this little calculation and you kind of want to match it because there's no point having battery backup two giving me 29 hours and then somewhere else in the system I only got 12 hours you kind of want to get these close to each other so let's say 22 is, is is the minimum so let's say 22 then i can adjust the loading that this one could have maybe 0.5 amps this one could have uh, maybe 0.5 amps and then i could take some of this current uh some of the sensors and shove them on this battery backup if possible in the similar area okay so that's how you analyze the power on your alarm system and i hope this is helpful um, just something else that you need to consider. This is best case scenario. Even though I'm saying 65%, I've derated it. Derated means you've kind of marked it down. It's like a car. It might say it can do 220 kilometers an hour, but really, can it do 220 kilometers an hour? Not really. Maybe downhill on the best case. Uh, with the right tires and uh, no no um, loading in the boot and maybe you'll get to 200 kilometers an hour but you couldn't do that consistently if there's a hill or um, there's uh, you load up the car a bit you'll find that it can't do that well it's the same as a battery maybe it says seven amp hours so it could probably give you the seven amps for one hour but if you have to extend that over many hours you'll see that it doesn't work like that it's going to drop quite considerably and that's why you derate it by 65 percent and that's even why after three years you kind of uh, have to get a new battery anyway so um you're kind of lucky if you get even uh 60 percent of that uh, uh life's um the the backup time all right so let me just tell you one last thing these are best case scenario as well don't forget that there's some loads that fluctuate. For example, maybe the transmitter on the main board activates. That's a one amp load. 
And that might activate, oh, okay, it's not for long, maybe five to 10 seconds, but that may be happening every one hour. And that one amp might jolt this batteries or deplete this battery quite uh, drastically. So, you know, even though I showed you that this is 0.95 amps on that uh, the last uh, installation I just showed you, but then when I pressed the remote button, you saw that that went another 50 amps was used, uh, 50 milliamps. And those are minor things, but what about sensors that are actually activating? You know, maybe there's dogs walking around, maybe kids keypads get activated because you know they they come out of sleep mode so this is kind of the best case scenario you could derate these hours by another 10 percent so instead of 22.7 it'll probably be about 21 uh, 0.2 hours. Okay, so that's bringing me to the end of the video. I hope you're starting to understand how to uh, take uh, current measurements, how to uh, partition your power in such a way that you don't have all the power being drawn from one battery backup or may your main alarm. Remember, if I had to try and take 0.95 plus 0.4 plus 0.2 um, all on the main board, you'll find that that probably be overload the board. Maybe, yes, uh, the board can pr maybe take one and a half amps, but then don't forget that the transmitter may may activate. That's plus one amp. And then don't forget that the SMS communicator may send a transmission and things like that. And eventually, yeah, that's how you overload your circuits. That's why it's good to spread the load in the same way as you set up a distribution board. And I hope this was helpful. So thanks for watching. Cheers.